Welcome, welcome everybody. So glad you all are here, and I am so glad for you that are joining online. Amen. Uh, tonight, our fifth spiritual principle is, can somebody tell me? Integrity. Amen. So tonight we're looking at integrity. And what I would like for us to do as we get going, I know most of us probably had a pretty busy day. A lot going on. So I want us just to take a... This just always helps me to quiet myself down and get in receptive mode. But let's just take a few deep breaths. I mean... Oh, thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. God uses the practical stuff. Amen? I got a little song on my heart, and the Lord keeps bringing it to me. And if you know it, join in. And if you don't, that's okay. But what I would like for everybody to do, uh -huh. when I'm singing, when I say the words, my, why don't you put your hand on your heart. Okay? Beautiful Beautiful Jesus is beautiful and Jesus makes beautiful things of my life carefully touching me causing my And Jesus makes beautiful things of my life. We love you tonight, Jesus. And we just thank you for this time to come together as a body in Yeshua, Hamashiach, and Father God. I just ask you tonight to speak to every heart in transformative ways. Those that are here present tonight, those that are watching online, those that are going to watch later online. Father, just speak to every heart. And we thank you for it, Father. We thank you in advance for how you're going to come, Holy Spirit, and minister in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, integrity. Okay, we've admitted to God through Jesus Christ and to ourselves and another human being the exact nature of our wrongs. Um, I think we all know the exact nature of our wrongs. Amen. Okay, now I just want, I just looked up in like the Webster Dictionary and I just want to share this with you. Integrity, the quality of being honest and having strong moral principles and moral uprightness. And then I began to look at some core values of integrity. Reliability, truthfulness, honesty, and trustworthiness. Okay? Now, just some practical ways, but big and huge ways that we could show integrity in our day-to-day -day lives. Refrain from sharing other secrets. Keeping We keep information confidential. Okay? Uh, not gossiping. Being honest with the people in our lives and following through on promises that we've made. You know, if we give somebody our word, I mean, that's, that's big, okay? And this is something that the Lord has really had to real sister Angie in. Because you know how you get in the Holy Ghost and you get way up there on that mountain and you just ready to run through a tree and leap over a wall. And, oh, Brother Jody, I, I will see you tomorrow, but we will. Yeah, you know. And the Lord says, unless, and then he'll make, he'll make, he makes me fulfill my word. So then when you understand what I'm saying, so that's big. That's big. All right, James 5 and 16. We know that we confess our sins one to another. We pray for one another that we may be healed, for the prayers of the righteous are very effectual. Now, 
If we're going to confess our sins, this entails two things. We're going to trust God. We must trust the Father. Amen? And we must trust others. And we know to use wisdom with that. Amen? Those that the Father that we prayed about, the Lord said, okay, right here, you can, this is a safe place. This, you can trust this, this place. Amen? And God has those people for us. Okay? Now, as we trust God, and we let Him in, it gives us the ability to trust others. And I like to think like this confession brings a manifestation of the freedom that Jesus longs to give us. But, and some people, and I have been guilty of this. Just trust God. You know, when somebody's going through something, just trust God. But you know, and we're going to look at this in a minute, but some people's ability to trust has been impaired. Amen. That it has been paralyzed in some areas. And we'll look at that a little bit more. Um, and then we will hold things in. And... Um, and we know that when we hold it in, it's like a spiritual or emotional cancer. And it, it develops guilt, shame, and anger. We see all these things as we, we press all this down and try to deal with it with self-reliance. Um, so we need to release, amen. We need to confess to others. Okay, we know that Trust involves my being truthful with myself. My acknowledging where I am at. My acknowledging where I have been. Um, many, trust involves, like I said, being truthful with ourselves. but there are many people that are hindered and have blockades in their ability to trust God and others because as a child, many people did not completely develop and grow in basic trust. And man, the Lord's just been speaking to me about this. Um, failure to acquire basic trust affects us throughout our adult lives. It overrides into our adult lives. It impacts, impacts our ability to relate to God and to others. And we know that basic trust is key in our physical, mental, and emotional development. Psychologists will tell us this. And I want to talk a little bit about basic trust from the ages of zero to two years old. How has basic trust developed in those years? I think parenting is one of the most important, most, most important things, jobs that we'll ever do. We've been entrusted with those children on this planet. Amen? Okay. From zero to two, a child needs warm, general affection from their mothers and fathers. Lack of affection destroys basic trust. They need proper nurturing. Even the father in his infinite wisdom in Psalms 22 and 9, this verse says, You brought me out of the womb. You made me trust in you. Even at my mother's breast. Oh my gosh, that that child getting affection, the child needs proper and appropriate touch at this age to be cared for physically, to be rocked slowly, gently, and singing the little songs to them, to be played with in appropriate ways, singing, you know, peek a -boo, playing those games. That's developing basic trust to just care for them in every way. If basic trust is acquired from zero to two years old, then this is the child at two years old will be able to adapt to change. They learn that their parents exist even when their parents are out of the room. They have trust. Mommy and Daddy is going to be back. Okay. Um, this leads to independence. Okay. How many has ever heard the term the terrible twos? That child is in the terrible twos. That is not terrible. 
when you look at it in actuality because the child by the, in, from two to four, basic trust, when they, they grow and they develop, they develop that basic trust, they learn their independence. How many know a two-year-old's favorite word is no? No. No when they shake their heads this way and no when they shake it that way. It's really good because they're learning independence. Um, okay. They need for basic trust to be developed in this time, they need freedom to venture away from mom and dad. You know, of course, we're going to be safe. Deep. We're going to know where they're at. But, and they need to know that they can return consistently to affectionate parents. They need freedom to say no without harsh discipline. Um, they need... Because that independence is just there. That it, basic trust builds independence and the child's ability to begin to say, you are you and I am me. They begin to distinguish their, their own personal self. So if we see that, and I never realized that, but basic trust is acquired in that independence. Ah. Uh, Okay, now, when a child has the courage to say no to giant adults, and a child's perception is not like our perception, and I'm going somewhere with this, you know, just be patient with me, but when a, um, you know, they see adults, when they're like this, they look at adults, and they see them as giants. And I remember when Josiah was about three years old, he said, uh, he said, Mama, you know, he was telling me something. He said, you know those big people. And I said, he said, is that what you call He said, no, Mama, I know those human beings. He didn't call them giants. He called them human beings. And I just, I had to write that down. It's something, you know, to write the little stuff down. And it, it, yeah, it's just precious years later. But uh, he said, you know, Mama, I said, human beings. I'm thinking, we're all human beings. He said, you know those big people like you and Daddy? I'm like, okay. Okay. <laughs> you get talking about adults. All right. There's other ages and stages of developing basic trust, and it goes on up to adulthood, to the teenage years, and we don't have time to get into all of that tonight. Um, but we can see the visibility and adults who did not get basic trust. And yet we're saying, okay, now you need to trust God. Mm. Sometimes people are so broken that when we say, oh, you need to trust God, it's like telling a crippled man to get up and run a race. That's got to be developed, okay? But the good news is, the good news is, that what we didn't get as children, we can get it now through Abba Father. Amen? Amen. All right. Uh, okay. Some of the signs of an adult that did not develop and grow in basic trust, they can't say no. They're conformist. They just they can't say no. They're confused, undisciplined. They can't inter interact in relationships with others in healthy ways. They either comply or are just so uh, dominate the relationship or they're very compliant. They enter codependent relationships and the list goes on and on. There's too self-critical about their failures. They lack confidence. They are very antisocial. Antisocial because and they, they have no opinions of their own. Uh, they are easily hurt, very sensitive, and the list goes on and on because some people in all reality have become frozen in a time when they did not get what they needed as a child and they're still frozen there. Amen? And this is where the false identities form. Okay? Uh, they're not trusting God, others, and not even themselves. Okay? Now, we know that there are children that, and this, this happens my heart, they're abused, 
every day in this world. There's sexual abuse, there's physical abuse, children locked in closets. I mean, I know you've all heard the horror stories. Uh, children that uh, abuse emotionally, verbally. Children that have uh, been abandoned, rejected by their own parents. Can you see the broken, the brokenness for the lack of the trust, the ability to trust? Amen? Because our parents, the first ones that we see, are, they're like, not God to us, but we look up to them in such a way and it makes such an impression on our, on our lives. Okay? Uh, some people don't know how to receive love, okay? And as I already said, the good news is Father God can restore and heal and give us what we didn't get as a child. And I would like to give an example of this. Uh, you know in Romans 8 where it says we can call God Abba, Abba Father? And if you look that up in the Greek, it's Daddy God or Papa God. And I will never forget having an encounter with the Lord, uh, with the Father. This was at the Commerce Church. I was out there in the office. And uh, I'll never forget this. Now, when I say this, I'm not speaking bad of my grandfathers. But they they were hard workers, they were good men, but they did not know how to show affection. They did not. My grandfathers never said, I love you. There was never none of that. They didn't even hardly look at you. They never picked you up. They never held you. I don't know if it was their generation, but as a child, that hurt me because I wanted their approval, their attention. This is, okay? And it's like, and my daddy, he was great. He was great, I thought. And that, as I got older, I said, my daddy overcome a lot because he can tell his children and his grandchildren that he loves them. Well, I don't know if it was a generational thing, or, but I knew somehow as a child that it was not right. So maybe I had seen it personified on TV or something, a grandfather loving their little... Okay, so I am just praying one day and, oh my gosh, um, it's like I'm just... God, Father, give me the words to express this. But it's like I am in a heavenly room and the Lord speaks to me and He said, I'm going to give you what you didn't get as a little girl with your grandfathers. And I could, I was in the father's lap. I was not grown like I am. I was a little girl. That little part that was wounded. And I was sitting in the father's lap. And ever since then, I have experienced more freedom. And I can say, Papa God. Oh my God. I can, I, and I can see him as that loving grandfather that's going to scoop you up. And it's going to love you. And oh my God, give you that affection. So I want to say these things can be restored when we didn't get them. And I honestly had forgotten about that. I had forgotten. But that day the Father hadn't forgotten. Amen. And he, he restored that. Okay. But acknowledging our truth is big in integrity. Because truthfulness is a core of integrity. Now, John 14, 6 says that Yeshua is the way, the truth, and the life. Oh my. Okay. So, if I just have a math equation, and let's say I put my environment plus my experiences equals my truth. Well, my truth is not going to set me free. Okay? It's that environment, all the things, and uh, things of childhood affect us so, so very, oh, so much into our adulthood. But, okay. Things that we experienced, things that we went through, places we didn't develop basic trust, things that environments where we have been deeply molded by, 
that we are extremely influential and influential. Uh, I can't even say the word. Somebody interpret it for me. <laughs> influential in those areas. So we are basically the sum total of our experiences and our environments, our truth, whether we was abused, whether the environment was critical, whether there was a lot of shame, always a lot of shame. Oh, Father, Father. Um, now, my dad was a really, really good man, and I love my dad, and I respect my dad, and I honor my dad. And a lot of times, our parents react out of what they were taught. And I think one day, when we get around the throne of God, it's just going to be the children and the parents and the children. And the, it's just past that. But I said, Father, I, I want to paint this. Because as a little girl, me and my brother, we were, you know, I was the oldest and my brother. And he got the worst end because he could do more work with my dad than I could. But when we would be, we worked outside a lot. I told my sister, she was spared. She was spared. <laughs> But we worked outside a lot. And Daddy would get frustrated, ill, aggravated. And he would say, and, and we had somebody in our family, a distant relative, that's name was Ellie Motes. Ellie Motes had some limitations, some problems, physically and mental. So we would be out there working. And Daddy would call me and my brother, Ellie Motes. And I said, if I thought about that, as I was writing, so I said, if I had a dollar for every time, I would. But that was saying, you don't measure up. You're not doing this right. And it just, re it just I can see areas how it went over. Now, he did not know. He did not intentionally do that for harm. He was frustrated, aggravated. I know that he loved me. I know he loved my brother. But this was the residue and the effects of it, okay? So we're the sum total. My environment, my experiences is my truth, and that won't set me free. But if I take my truth and just leave it hanging there with nothing but my truth, I'm left incomplete. Because Yeshua is the way, the truth, the life. All right, if I take my truth plus Satan's lies, then that's going to equal captivity. I'm going to be in captivity. Even if it's in an addiction, or even if it's in a way where you you feel your self confidence, self esteem is lacking, you feel like I don't measure up, I'm not doing this right. Okay, so my truth plus sex lies equals captivity. So Satan is trying to always keep us in bondage through lies, mm. but Jesus sets us free through truth. Then we know what uh, John 8, 32 says. Jesus said, you will know the truth and the truth will make you free. Well, I have got to combine my truth. Oh, I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. I got to combine my truth with his truth. Jesus sets the captive free through truth. You will know the truth. The truth will make you free. Now, God's truth is greater than my truth. And the total, total thing, my truth plus God's truth equals freedom. And we know in Galatians, Jesus said for, it is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Okay, my truth plus God's truth brings freedom. All that I've been through, my environment, my experiences, my traumas, my uh, uh, the abuse, all from all the way back to my mother's womb. Amen? God's truth is greater. And can God's truth can overcome all of my truth and all of your truth. Amen? And I don't really believe that the Father's truth can fully be released into our lives until we acknowledge our truth. And we take it to the Father. And He's so gracious. Because that day I had an encounter. I had not thought of that in years. You know, I was sitting in my Papa's, Papa God's lap, you know. I'm his little, I'm his little girl, you know. 
But God is gracious like that. If we pray and ask Him to give us what we didn't get as child. So we don't have a truth that God's truth can't overcome. Amen? Uh, Psalms 51. David said, Behold, you desire truth in the inward places, in the inward parts, in the hidden parts. You know, there's parts of us that we have tried to hide from where we didn't develop basic trust, where we didn't grow in that area. And those parts of us we have tried to hide. If it's lack of uh, self-confidence, if it's like, why well, you don't measure up? And I can remember that went through me, the Ellie looked thing, <laughs> went through it with me all the way through life, and I can remember I was at school I forget what grade I was in, but I was getting on up older, and the teacher had said, sweep the floor. Well, I raised my hand. I don't want the teacher's approval. <laughs> See me, hear me. <laughs> and so I started sweeping the floor with these other two girls, and they say, oh, you're not sweeping, sweeping that floor right. Well, I continued to sweep the floor, but it was like a dart out of hell because that come back to me. I had not been healed of that. That little thing just brought brought gloom and doom. I mean, it just really tripped me up. And I believed the lie that I did not measure up and I could do nothing right. Oh, thank you, Jesus. That, oh, mm, that he affirms us. Amen? Yeah. Knowing truth in my inmost places and even those places where I've, you know, tried to hide. Taking all our bad experiences, our wounds, our abusive childhood, uh, our environment, everything, and surrendering it to His truth. My truth plus His truth equals freedom. And give Him our truth. He knows it anyway. Psalms 139, He knows more about us than we know about ourselves. And He knows our uprising, our downsitting. He knows our thoughts are far off. He knows what we're going to think even before we think it. So He already knows it. But when we come and surrender and say, Father, this is my truth. I don't like this part of my truth, of my experiences or environment. But when we bring it to Him and let Him bathe it in His truth, I love what Psalms 145 and 18 says. The Lord is near to all who call to Him in truth. Truth, amen. And I am so thankful to my Papa God, to your Papa God, that we can come before Him and we can just be truthful and just lay out all the good, the bad, and the ugly. <laughs> It's messy sometimes. Oh, thank you, Jesus, for your just endless love. Amen? Amen. Matthew 19. Jesus said, Forbid not the little children to come unto me, but such is the kingdom of heaven. Let them come. And the disciples were trying to steer them away and steer them away. And Jesus looked and he saw me and said, No, forbid not. Let the little children come. So I, I, am, I am thankful that even now, and the little girl parts of me that didn't get what I needed. And the little girl parts of me that was wounded or traumatized. I am thankful. And a lot of times when the Lord will show me a vision or something, we talked about this Friday night and hearing God's voice. I'm a little girl and I'm, I'm sitting in his lap or doing something, you know. And I, many times I'm a little girl. He takes you back to those wounded places. And let the little children come to me. Those parts of you. He wants us to come with those parts of us that have not been healed. Maybe that we've tried to press down and not been acknowledged because this carries over. It carries over into adult. It, it manifests itself in so many ways in addictions and... Oh. Okay. Now, I said that we could, we could be restored basic trust. How many? We know there's always restoration in our Heavenly Father. How do we 
we restore? How do we get if we know there's something missing and something lacking and we're seeing the fruit from it, the behavior from it in our adult lives? How do we go? First thing we go to go to Abba Father, Daddy God. Okay, okay, I need you to give me what I didn't get as a little girl. Spending time in his this is so basic, but it's it's just it's, it's this is it. Time in his presence. Time in his word. His word is truth, amen. Oh Jesus. Alright, so we as a body of Christ, God desires to use us to resurrect basic trust in others. And I think about when we have this sober living. And I have been praying. I said, Father, give us all wisdom. Because a lot of these people that come in here, they all look rough and tough and the tattoos and all, but they are fragile. Mentally, but they are fragile. They're so broken. And I, that has been a prayer that the Father has had me praying, Lord, give us wisdom. Give us wisdom. But God wants us to be gateways to restore basic trust in their lives. And I'm um, going with the trust, guys, because if we don't trust the Father, we're not going to trust others, and we're surely not going to be confessing nothing. So we're not going to be rejected, okay? All right. <clears throat> Jesus desires to heal the wounds that have caused us to put on the false identities. Some practical ways, some practical ways that we as the bride of Christ can see restoration in people that, and maybe they got parts of basic trust. I had parts of it. I had enough trust to come to God, but I was not developed in some areas, okay? Um, so this is just some, some things that we can do. When they have lost their way, we can gently lead them back to a true perspective of our Father God. Gently. Thank you, Jesus. We can show them affection and appropriate touch. And I would we recommend the men hugging the men and the women hugging the women. This just, you know, safeguards us. Um, but sometimes that little boy or that little girl, we God will go beyond the present, that moment that we're right there with them, and He will He wants to embrace that wounded child, that wounded little boy or little girl. We can give them affirmation that they didn't get earlier in stages of life by their parents. If their parents were always you know denoting shame on them or critical. They need some validation and affirmation. They're going to get that in Father's presence, but so many times people are so broken and injured that God, we have to have faith for them so they can have faith for themselves. We're that gateway. Amen. And I so believe in counseling. I think counseling is very effective. But I want to say today that I think the most greatest form of counseling is prayer counseling. That's when you go to that counselor and you sit down and they notice some things. They know, you know, some things are manifest and, and everything is not a demon. Many times we need to confront that. And the Holy Spirit, we've got to have discernment to know Okay, is this somewhere they think, or is this the enemy manifesting? Okay, um, but prayer cancel. And example, one time I went to this counselor, and she was a great prayer counselor, and this was years ago. And the Lord showed me, you know, that verse in Hebrews: uh, "Beware lest they, um, lest you become bitter, a bitter root spring up in you and defile many." Man, I was not aware, but I had a bitter root judgment, and that's a whole other thing for us to get into at another time. But I had to renounce that and ask Father, forgive me, because honor your father and mother is big, you know? All right. But 
We do make better root judgments as a child. We got to deal with all that. Vows, inner vows. So prayer counseling, I believe, is less effective. And there's, this is some ways that we can pray for somebody. If we see somebody that's not gotten development fully in basic trust, we can ask the Father to go back in time in that life where that trust should have been built, but instead a crack is in their foundation. And so now they're an adult and they don't have an even foundation to stand on because they didn't develop it. But we can ask the Lord to minister to that little wounded boy or little wounded girl. Uh, we can ask Father to search out their wounds and heal them. Because like I said, Psalms 139, He knows me better than I know me. <laughs> Amen. He knows us more. We can lead them in forgiveness prayers. This is big. I'll go in renouncing things. Um, because a lot of times that wounded child, that abused child needs to forgive their mom, their dad for for inappropriate touch, lack of affection, or woundings. Ask the Lord to reach down and pick up that little one and to bring His comfort, assurance, and nurture, nurture them. Amen. Fill in, Holy Spirit, the cracks in their foundation that they can trust. Trust Holy Spirit. So that's all I got for tonight, but I'd like to do something right before we turn the camera off. I want to thank you all. I don't believe it's by accident if you were watching online. I believe the Lord ordered your steps to hear this, and I, I pray healing for everybody here, for people watching online, and I want us to just pray before we, we turn that off. Oh, Father God, in the name of Yeshua, in the name that's above every name. Lord, I ask you to give every person here and every person that's watching online what they didn't get from the time of conception until now. Father God, I ask you to go in and heal and fill Holy Spirit the cracks in every foundation and where there's lack you're the God that's more than enough, and I pray that you lavish on them. Give them what they didn't get, Father God, so that they can reach their maximum potential and who you've called them to be and the destiny that you have placed and called them to from the foundation of the world. Father, we thank you. I thank you for being gentle and kind and long-suffering with me and not giving up on me. We ask this in the name of Jesus. Amen.